Howdy folks, and welcome to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. What we're seeing today is a, well I was going to say a sneak peek preview, but uh, <laughs> there's nothing sneaky about it. A whole bunch of uh, EU community contributors have been given some stock footage of various tanks demonstrating the new motion physics that's, well, it's not coming in patch 9.7, that's the only thing they'll tell us. Um, sometime after 9.7. The first iteration of the new World of Tanks Havoc motion physics, and this is what you're seeing here. Now, a couple of disclaimers obviously apply. What you're seeing is not necessarily representative of the final version. If you should happen to hear your email or instant messenger programs going off during the course of this video, don't panic. It's this video. Apparently, whichever guy at Wargaming headquarters was recording this didn't bother switching his email. <laughs> or instant messaging programs off first, so you're constantly hearing those going off in the background. Thirdly, we um, we were provided with some notes to explain exactly what's going on when you're watching all of these different video clips. Unfortunately, the notes looked as if they'd been translated from Russian into English by a Frenchman. Um, so, <laughs> they're a bit of a mess. But I'll do my best to try to figure out exactly what they're saying uh, and explain to you what it is that you're watching when you're seeing these various different tanks perform various different tricks using these new motion physics. And the final thing that you have to bear in mind, uh, which we'll cover just as soon as we watch this 1390 throw himself to his death. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yes. The final thing that you have to bear in mind when watching these videos um, and seeing tanks flip and slide all over the place like this AMX 5100 is that this is not how you should expect the tank to handle when you're just trying to drive from point A to point B. The people driving the tanks in this video are specifically trying to show off the new motion physics. So they're specifically pulling handbrake turns and trying to flip the backside of the tank out as much as they possibly can just to demonstrate the physics. So. Bearing all of that in mind, let's take a look at the notes and try to make some sense of them. First, suspension will start to work. It will be easier to fight on railway, especially for tanks with small elevation angle. I have to admit, I did struggle with that one a bit, but what I think they're saying there is, um, well, at the moment, the suspension of your vehicles in World of Tanks just doesn't work the way it should. And if you're in a lighter vehicle, and you're stopped halfway across a railway track, there is a tendency for the vehicle to just rock backwards and forwards on its suspension, without the suspension actually taking the strain the way that it should. And what I think they're saying here is that with the new motion physics, when you're in that kind of situation, when you're stopped halfway across a railway line, only a couple of your road wheels and the suspension attached to those road wheels is actually elevated by being in contact with the rails. The other road wheels and by extension, the suspension attached to those road wheels should be settling down on the ground and taking up the weight of your tank. So you shouldn't be rocking backwards and forwards when you're crossing an obstacle like a railway line, for example. And I think that's what they're saying is going to happen with the new motion physics. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> it's really difficult to make sense of a translation like that. The next one, however, a lot more easy to understand. Here we go. When landing with... actually I should do these in a Russian accent. When landing with balancing on both of suspensions, the survival rate of the moving one will increase. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Um, <laughs> okay, what they're saying there, light tank drivers in particular, take note. Um, when your tank leaves the ground, when you go airborne, when you catch a bit of air, if you manage to land in a sort of semi-controlled fashion with both sets of suspension impacting the ground at the same time, there's a much better chance that you won't destroy your suspension. Alternatively, if you do go airborne and start to flip and you land on just one set of suspension, you're probably going to write the suspension off. So that seems to be what they're saying there. And uh, our AMX 5100 driver here is going to give us a practical demonstration. A bit of an extreme demonstration. However, people have been asking what happens if you flip your tank with new motion physics, will it destroy the tank? Well, certainly in this version of the motion physics test, have a look at this. AMX 5100 goes airborne, hits the ground, only takes off half the health of the tank, because he flipped over he dies anyway. Next, 
more real-life tanks behaviour, the dependence of stopping distance on tank speed and weight, and much more. Okay, this I understand. What they're saying here is that the weight of your tank and the speed that your tank is doing when you suddenly decide to stop moving forward is going to have a much more realistic effect on how long it takes you for the tank to actually come to a halt. There's going to be no more of this screeching along at 50 kilometers per hour in your FCM 50T and then suddenly slamming the brakes on and coming to an almost immediate halt five meters further on from where you were when you took your finger off the W key. That isn't going to happen anymore. Now, further on in the notes, I also saw a mention about a more realistic interaction between the tank suspension and the surface that you're driving on. And we saw a hint of that in the AMX 5100 clip when the tank was trying to scale a rock face. And you're seeing a lot more of it now, at least that's my impression, when you're seeing this IS-3 slipping and sliding around corners here on Himmelsdorf because the tank's driving on cobblestones and there's not an awful lot of traction available on cobblestones. They're bad enough driving on cobblestones when you're in a car with rubber wheels. When you're driving around in a tank with metal tracks, it's very, very difficult to, to grip. And so what you're seeing here, I mean, the IS-3 is by no means a light machine, but he's making it look like a light machine. Now, obviously, the driver of the IS-3 in this particular video clip is specifically trying to make as much of the motion physics as possible. He's not driving the tank normally. You're seeing him do lots and lots of handbrake turns. And that's something that we don't really do much in World of Tanks. We don't really use the brakes on the tanks at the moment. There isn't really any need to. If you want to suddenly stop, just stop moving forward. You don't really need to use the brakes. You're not going to have to learn how to use the brakes. They are, by the way, in World of Tanks, by default, uh, bound to your spacebar. For those of you who have never used the brakes on the tank before but the driver of this is3 is using the brakes all the time he's using the brakes to flip the back end of the tank out and make sudden sharp turns again i i have to repeat the point because i guarantee somebody's going to have forgotten by now but you're not watching somebody just drive a tank from point a to point b here the, the whole purpose of these video clips is to demonstrate the motion physics and so the people driving the tanks in these clips are specifically trying to throw the tank around as much as they possibly can to show off the motion physics. And one of the things that occurred to me, specifically when watching this IS-3 throwing itself around Himmelsdorf, was how to take advantage of the new motion physics to do things in your tanks that you're currently not able to do because the tanks don't handle as realistically as they might. Let's say, for example, you're in an IS-3 on Himmelsdorf, and you need to get around a corner, but you know there's an enemy tank on the other side of the corner with his gun pointed, just waiting for you to come around the corner. And the first thing that happens when you come around a corner in a tank is they fire a shot into your inside drive wheel, they blow your tracks off, they do some damage to your tank, you're now stuck on the other side of the corner with the front of your tank pointing out, your turret and your gun is on the wrong side of the corner, you can't fire back, you've used your repair kit, and they just reload and keep shooting you in the same spot through the drive wheel over and over and over until you're dead. Well, this isn't a perfect example, but you get the general idea. What if you could come around a corner like this? Approach the corner, turn, apply the handbrake, and with a little bit more practice, come around the corner with the front of your tank pointing towards the enemy. And reading further on into the notes, there are all kinds of badly translated references to doing exactly that, using the handbrake to affect rapid and sudden changes in the direction that the tank is facing. There are also mentions in the notes of being able to do things like, well, this. You cannot get over that section of the railway line on Prokhorovka. Well, you can now. Reading directly from the patch notes, well, I'll say patch notes, <laughs> reading directly from the notes that we have been supplied, the possibility to overcome previously impassable objects, like that section of the railway track on Prokhorovka. This is by no means as massive and revolutionary a change as when physics was first introduced to World of Tanks. Those of you who've been playing that long, can you actually remember what the game was like before physics and the remodeling of the maps for physics? It was a, well, people would argue that World of Tanks is still a very pretty corridor game, but it really, really was 
um, back before physics was introduced. There were just entire areas of the map that were basically no-go areas that you, you just couldn't. Well, as an example, it was impossible to drown a tank. You couldn't. You couldn't fall off the road running along the side of the lake on Lakeville and drown the tank. Derpenberg was just Erlenberg, right? There were no tank drownings on Erlenberg because the rivers and the lakes and all the water areas were just marked as impassable areas. You would just hit an invisible wall if you tried to drive off the side of the lakeside road on Lakeville. You couldn't do it. You couldn't be pushed off an object. It was just not in the game code. So the introduction of physics to World of Tanks, and those of you who've been playing World of Tanks for a relatively short period of time, um, by comparison to those of us who played the game prior to when physics were introduced, you're probably scratching your heads thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Well, yeah, imagine that. You couldn't drown a tank because the water areas of the maps were marked as no-go areas. It was not possible to get a tank into them, regardless of how much you tried. Um, physics changed all of that overnight. Now, I'm not saying that these new motion physics are going to redefine the game the way the introduction of physics did, but... I think it's going to be interesting seeing how quickly people learn to take advantage of it, to do things like make sudden sharp changes to the direction of your tank, to be able to power slide, if you like, around a corner and actually use the new system to your advantage. And, you know, talking about coming around a corner um, sideways, if you like, by using the handbrake and flicking the back end of the tank out in order to already have your strongest armor pointing towards the enemy as you come into his... Uh, field of view. That's just one example off the top of my head. I'm sure there are going to be much more inventive uses of these new motion physics that you guys are going to come up with. And it is going to be interesting to see how you know good players take advantage of these new motion physics, because you are, if you're going fast enough and you've got a heavy enough machine and you're ramming the right kind of target, going to be able to flip tanks over completely. You're really going to be able to use the weight and power of heavy and powerful machines in close combat to bully lighter tanks in a way that you just aren't really able to at the moment. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how people take advantage of that. Because every time there's been a major change in World of Tanks, and physics is the obvious example, the player base has always been split into two groups. You've got the reactionaries who just complain about it and say, oh, they've never been able to get tanks in that position before, it's not fair, I wasn't expecting to get shot at from there. And then you've got the players that just shut up and get on with it, and they learn how to exploit the new features and put them to their advantage and, funnily enough, end up winning more games. I have to admit I was a little frustrated watching uh, these various video clips when they've been going on and on about how much more realistically the suspension interacts with the terrain and there were so few clips where they actually showed us the suspension working. Um, this T-44 clip, for example, does at various points actually show us the suspension interacting with the environment. It's not animated yet, as well as I would have expected it to be, um, as you can see here. But what I think they're actually saying, and again it's difficult to say because the notes that we were provided with were so badly translated, but at the moment there are only three different types of surface in World of Tanks. You've got hard terrain, soft terrain, and medium terrain. And soft terrain, including water, is stuff like swamps. Very, very boggy muddy areas. Medium terrain is pretty much what our T-44 here is about to drive onto right now. Grass, fields, your normal terrain in World Attacks. And then hard terrain, things like rocks, uh, roads, cobblestone surfaces like Himmelsdorf for example, that's your hard terrain. And generally speaking your suspension performs better on hard terrain than it does on medium terrain and better on medium terrain than it does on soft terrain. Well all of that's changing. And what I think they're saying, and, and this is just my guess, I haven't seen this in writing, or if I have, I didn't understand it because it was so badly translated. <laughs> but, but what I think they're saying is that the specific type of terrain that your vehicle is moving on, whether that's mud, grass, sand, um, a riverbed, or even snow and ice, is going to have a, its own unique effect on the way your suspension interacts with the surface. And that actually, and it never occurred to me until as I was recording this video, that we haven't actually seen how the tanks are going to handle this new motion physics on snow and ice maps. I think that would have been a bit of an eye-opener, although perhaps they haven't encoded that yet. It is, of course, all work in progress. Nothing is finalised. But, um, yeah, it's a shame. I would have liked to have seen tanks doing handbrake turns on Arctic. <laughs> 
And who knows, it may be possible for a TOG to go faster than 20 kilometers per hour on snow map. I guess we'll have to see. So, anyway, motion physics coming when? Well, all I know is not planned for patch 9.7, but hopefully to be implemented soon. So, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> you know how these things work. Um, yeah, what do you think? I'm sure there are going to be lots of opinions about this. Um, I'm sure the comparison between um, what you're seeing here and War Thunder Arcade Battles <laughs> is going to be the number one comment, um, because I know how your minds work. <laughs> but anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.